right now we're going to talk about the oyster and uh, we're going to talk about the SCORE project, but that's an acronym for a project that we have here at our Department of Natural Resources. And I'm going to let these guys tell you what SCORE is and tell you a little bit about the life cycle of the oyster. We have here to my left, Ms. Nancy Hadley, and to my right, Mr. Michael Hodges, and they're going to be um, our presenters for this session. We also have two groups of students. We have a group of students, a new, fresh group of students from Orange Grove Charter Elementary School. Y'all just wave right quick, Orange Grove Tigers. And we have some Trojans, Sue Morrison's class from James Island Charter High School. Wave, Trojans. Okay, now let's turn it over to Nancy and Mike. Thank you, Louie. Well, as Louis said, this program is called SCORE. And SCORE stands for South Carolina, bet you could guess that, Oyster Restoration and Enhancement. And it's a volunteer-based program where we get wonderful citizens like these Trojans to come and help us build oyster reefs. Does anybody have an idea why we would want to build oyster reefs? Do you know, anybody got an idea what might be important about oyster reefs? The habitat for other creatures. That's, that's, one. that's one very important thing about oyster reefs. They are biogenic. They're building habitat. And this, in this aquarium, we've got a little mini oyster reef here. And I don't know if you can see them there, but there are a lot of critters in here. We've got blue crabs, and we've got shrimp, and we've got some little killifish, and there's an oyster toadfish in there hiding someplace. All of these creatures live on the oyster reef. And if you didn't have an oyster reef, they wouldn't have a home. And the bigger fish are gonna come here in order to eat these little fellas. So they need the oyster reef too. So that's one really important thing about oyster reefs. Anybody have any other ideas why oyster reefs might be important? Because they're filter feeders. And they clean the water out. Very good, Taylor. Taylor says they are filter feeders and they clean out the water. And this is, this is very true. And we have a demonstration of it right here. You see this water, how cloudy this side is? They were both cloudy earlier, but what's the difference in this side and this side? It has oysters. You're right. This side has oysters. These oysters have been filtering the water. And look how nice and clear they have made it. So oysters are nature's filter. They're out there filtering the water all day long because that's how they get their meal. A single oyster can filter. How much do you think he can filter? Maybe a quart. Actually, a single oyster can filter two gallons in an hour. Wow. That's a lot of filtering. Two gallons in an hour. So oysters are constantly cleaning up the water. So that's why we have um, this program to restore oyster reefs because they're important for habitat and keeping the water clean. And as we go along, we'll talk about some other important things about oysters. Um, let me tell you a little bit about how we build a reef. How do you think we'd build a reef? Got any idea? How would you build an oyster reef? Huh? Huh? Uh, shell bags. This is one piece of an oyster reef. So anyone know why we want to put shell out there? Well, it all has to do with the life cycle of the oyster. Oysters, there are actually male and female oysters. And here's a picture of them spawning. And they're actually releasing the eggs and sperm into the water column. And when they are fertilized, they make this little larvae. See, just tiny. This is under a microscope. You can't see him without a microscope. It's very little. And that planktonic larva is going to float around in the water for about two weeks and it when he's about two weeks old he starts to metamorphose you all know what metamorphosis is what what else metamorphoses that you know about butterflies 
There you go, a butterfly. Very good answer. It changes from one form to another. Well, the, the oyster metamorphoses also, and it changes from this planktonic form to a sedentary form. It can't move anymore. So when it gets to be about this big, which is about a half a millimeter, this oyster is going to sink to the bottom and cement itself to something. And this is what it likes to cement to. It likes to cement to another oyster shell. Any ideas on why the larval oyster would want to cement to an oyster shell? Why not just a dock piling? Whoa, Rook has got an answer again. It might think that it's um, an oyster reef or something. There you go. Because it thinks it's an oyster reef. Oysters need to live together. They need to live in a reef. So they look for other oysters. And that way they know they won't be all by themselves. They'll be living in an oyster reef. Because if you've got this kind of a life cycle where you are broadcast spawner, if there's not another oyster nearby, you're never going to make any new oysters. So they have to live in a reef. So these baby oysters can actually smell oyster shell. Well, they sense it chemically. So they're out there floating in the water, and when they pass over an oyster reef, they smell the shell and drop out to the bottom and cement themselves. That's pretty cool, huh? That they can smell an oyster reef. So when we eat an oyster, what do you usually do with the shell? What do you all do with your shell? Recycle them. All right, Ms. Marson recycles hers. <laughs> Most people probably don't recycle them, but that's what we need to do because when we take those oyster shells out of the water, we're taking away the place the baby oyster was going to land. And if we just take, take, and take, soon there's not any place for baby oysters. So what the Department of Natural Resources does is recycle oyster shell, but we need y'all's help because we're not eating all the oysters you guys are. So we need you to bring back your oyster shell after you have eaten them. And then we take the oyster shell and build oyster reefs with them. And one way we do it is with volunteers. And what we do is put the shell in these mesh bags and then we can carry those out and build an oyster reef. And these folks here have volunteered to do that for us today.